And I've, I've told, I don't know how many times I've told the story, and I've had the guy on the program, Andy McCarthy. If you've heard this, bear with me, because some haven't. Andy McCarthy used to work as a United States attorney, uh, assistant United States attorney in the Manhattan office, the Southern District of New York. It was his job. He was the lead prosecutor of the blind sheikh, Omar Abdel Rahman, back in 1993, 94, 95. Omar Abdel Rahman had a mosque in New Jersey in which he was advocating the blowing up of the, uh, uh, the Lincoln Tunnel and the Holland Tunnel and a, and a couple of other bridges and some other landmarks. And he had a bunch of followers that were attempting to implement what he was putting into place. Anyway, he was caught, was put on trial. What Andy did to prepare for the trial was to read the Quran. He wanted to find, he thought he was dealing with a kook. He thought he was dealing with a real extremist wacko in Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman. So he read the Quran. His intent was to find out how Omar Abdel Rahman was off the mainstream tack. And he was shocked. I mean, Andy's written books about this. He was stunned because he found out that Omar Abdel Rahman was not an extremist and was not off the beaten path. He was following the Quran. He was a mainstream believer in the Quran. It shook him up. It woke him up, it scared the heck out of him, and it shaped the way he conducted the trial. And we end up, he ended up getting a conviction. But he, like everybody else, thought that these people, the terrorists, the terrorist leaders, the imams, were kook, radical offshoots. And he found out they're not. And that's why it's so frustrating to people who know to listen to Obama and his administration talk about how a great religion is being perverted or bastardized or what have you. The fact of the matter is, it isn't. It's being followed. And it's the only book they read, and they read it all the time. They don't allow outside influences other than to form and inform their hatred and their opposition to what they don't believe in and what isn't them. And that's what makes this so serious. It what it, it it's why this is as crucial as it is. We're not dealing with radical extremist offshoots. This is you've heard about the Wahhabi version of Islam in the Saudi in Saudi Arabia. Um it's mainstream. And Saudi Arabia, the royal family of Saudi Arabia, is the official... What's the... How can I phrase this? No, the exact title. But they are responsible for the belief and the purity and the implementation of Islam worldwide. It's where Mecca is and so forth. The royal family, the Saudi royal, the king of Saudi Arabia is the grand poobah of it all. Whoever he is from time to time. Anyway, I'm a little bit long here. I must take a brief time out. We'll be back after this. Don't 